You welcome to the Policy Council. My name is Okwe Emi Agbaje. On this edition, we look at the budgets, the budgeting process, the actual budgets. And I engage with a young Nigerian who has, is doing a heroic work in trying to make the Nigerian budget accessible to all of us. Enjoy the program. You welcome back to the Policy Council. My guest is a young man who is making a difference in terms of public sector finance and its understanding by the average Nigerian. He set up an, an NGO called Budget, as in Budget IT. And their mission seems to be getting the ordinary Nigerian to understand the budget. Olusheun David Onigbide, you're welcome to the Policy Council. Nice to see you, sir. Now, let, let, let me start. Let, let, let's, let me understand. I, I know you used to be a banker. You, yeah. I once interacted with you while you worked in First Bank Strategy, yeah. right? So how did you get into this field of, of, of budget and all of that? Yeah, for a while I worked in Strategy in First Bank, and it was interesting. Mm. And possibly this day was data mining day, so we were always looking for data to validate our propositions. Mm. And it was at that point we were doing some things with the public sector finance team, and um, I, I just got into this idea about well, looking at the whole public sector finance. I, I understand it. Most people in the banking industry, the core experts in this understand it. But what about the common citizens that mm. would necessarily also need this thing more? Who's, who's telling, taking the narrative to mm. them? So I brought up with this idea of uh, starting a st uh, an organization called Budget, and I got some support from co-creation of in Lagos. And um, besides in 2011, I, I quit the job in 2012 to fully focus on it. And so you quit your job in First Bank? Yeah, I quit my job in First Bank to on focus budget. on budget. For tell, time. tell me about co-creation hub because I've always been confused. Um, some, at some point, I thought you co-creation hub and budget was the same. What's co-creation? Yeah, co-creation job is a, we call it a living lab, an innovative space. So, okay, so it's a space this, yeah. that everybody it can use, yeah, yeah, use it. for IT purposes. Yes, yeah, so basically, so you have an idea, you're young, have an idea, and it's interesting, and they just provide the space for you, they provide the resources for you. Tell me, wh what are you trying to achieve? Yeah, but it's like a creative startup. The whole idea is... Um, with a lot of people, based on their level of literacy, they can't get an understanding of the budget. Mm. Or even based on their level of interest in certain matters of governance, you can't communicate to them the conventional way about the budget. Mm. And uh, like a friend of mine would say, like, apart from the constitution of a country, the, one, the most important document is it's the budget. The only way you, a politician will mainstream his campaign promises to the people during times of election is through the budget. Mm. So that kind of conversation can't just end with a vote. Mm. It has to continue uh, as long as it is there. So we need to be able to engage about this thing. And it's now not only for creative ways we could do it. Mm. Can we turn it into, into games? Can we turn it into apps? Can mm. we provide it into graphics, into mm. interactive visualizations? Can we make it cartoons, basically? Maybe that's a new platform where we're trying to take into now. So in which ways can we stimulate that discussion um, by making it more simpler for people to understand? Mm. So when you think from that standpoint of where, it, where they are beginning to have a better understanding, they can ask more questions, mm. they can throw up more debate, and which I think it, it's LD, and like, so like the oxygen of democracy, mm. um, where you want people to also be more participatory when it comes to governance. Mm. So, yeah. Excellent. I, I, and I completely agree with you. The, way mm. what I, the same statement you made, the way I put it is any statement, any policy, any, anything that doesn't end up in some budget is probably just talk. We should think. It's yeah. just talk. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so it, it's important work. And, um, and take me through the process of, yes, yeah, you had this idea, and yes, you got support from, from co-creation, but yeah. through the process and to eventually starting this organization, that now produces documents like this and, and, and so on. How long, how, how, how did you manage that creation of budget? Yeah, okay, so we are the co partner that we started this. I'm not really a technology developer, so mm -hmm. we have, we have the, the data analyst and the technology developer, so we're just building synergies together. So I was taking these old documents, mining them, bringing the most important thing, because not everything for the budget is for public consumption, basically. Mm -hmm. There's some parts that you also understand that there's some, uh, some, some terminologies, mm. you want uh, things like environment, you don't mm. want to start communicating mm. down, ground, down the street. So mm. you look for what makes matters most to the average citizen. So we mm. mind that out, and we now look for a developer to creatively build that into a to website. To build it into you know, 
your website, we look for ways of engaging even a graphics designer who can do, we can make data more beautiful and interesting mm -hmm. and build that together. So then we now look for what are the best mediums to share sharing this. So we look at Facebook, mm -hmm. we look at Twitter, you look at even printing it to people like that, people that don't have access to all these tools. So mm -hmm. it's an array of tools we're looking at. So it could it be radio? Can we can we start talking more of radio on the budget? Mm -hmm. can, can we start talking about the budget even on TV, can we build it into hubs? So, but for now, it, the, the strong focus has been on social media social because media. You, you want an early, you want early adopters of the platform. People who, by their personality, are interested in governance. The people who basically, I'm sure they wake up on every day worried about state of governance, how can it more, how can it improve? So you want to make people like that to understand the project. Yeah. And because you find people making a lot of argument out of context, out of facts, you want to be that independent source providing that information to them. This is the basic truth, these are the basic facts about it. So you can form your opinions and be guided when you make your discussion. Okay, excellent stuff. I have Olusheon David Onigude, one of my favorite young men, a, a young man who's taking a complex activity and is trying to make it accessible to all Nigerians. Let's take this short time out. I'll be right back. You welcome back to the Policy Council with Akwemi Agbaje, but my guest is Olushe David Onigbide, um, the lead partner in budget. Okay, good. Now, Shil, um, let, let's look at this exciting, for me, uh, document that you've, you have called Retooling the Nigerian Budget. And um, what it says, which is consistent with the objective, is that it seeks to if you want to get a quick background on the Nigerian budget, analyze using infographics and graphs, visit budget.com slash review. Yeah. So online we can do that. Yeah, you can do that. And, and we will get the same kind of information. About this. And more probably. More, more broad, yes. Okay, so let, 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 let's take our viewers through this document. Okay. Now the first page here talks about budget, yeah. common terms. Yeah. Uh, what are you trying to do there? Yeah, yeah. Basically, uh, the context, the understanding of the terminologies and budgets. Because mm. one of the first ways you can get lost in the argument is when people begin to talk about those technical issues you cannot just comprehend with as a, as a common citizen. Mm. So how can we basically make this for ready for everyday people? So yeah. this first page of this document yeah. it shows defines 11... We have 11 major terms. Major terms in the Nigerian budget. Starting with the budget, budget? itself. Yeah, okay. And it says the budget is an estimate of expenditures and revenues of the government over a specified period, usually a year. Yeah, yeah, okay, so, so anybody, you don't have to be a professor of economics, governor of economics or, <laughs> <laughs> or governor of the central bank yeah, public to, policy un analysis, <laughs> to yeah. understand that. Yeah, basically. Then recurrent expenditure, and a lot of people use that word. Yeah, the recurrent expenditure is too much. Mm, yeah. It's too much. Mm. Well, now, the, your, 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 your book says that the part of the total government expenditures meant for monthly payment of salaries of government workers, payments of debts, and daily running of ministries. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. Let's com contrast that so with capital yeah, expenditure. Yeah, yeah, basically. Capital expenditure is the part of the government expenditures meant for capital projects, schools, hospitals, and markets in the country. Yeah. Now, let's debate that. Now, I, I think I'm one of the earliest uh, analysts who started making noise about this concentration on recurrent, on recurrent spending. But at the time I started saying this, it was 75%. Hmm. We thank God it's now 67, 68%. 68%. Yeah. Okay, now they understand that recurrent expenditure is too high yeah. and capital expenditure too is low. too low. But do they understand the drivers? Because sometimes I hear them contradict themselves. So, for instance, they say, yes, the current expenditure is too high, but Christmas all salary. subsidy is the current yeah, expenditure. Yeah, definitely. Salaries. Yes. Increased salaries for the liberal Minimum yeah. wage yeah, is the current, current expenditure. Yeah. Then, the second level is, government should reduce the current expenditure. So, government says, let's look at all of these agencies mm. and rationalize them, the yeah. ones that are useless. And then they say, no, labor says, no, you no, cannot no, reduce uh, workforce. workforce. Yeah. You must. So how will, so, so I then understand that, okay, this will, in theory, understand mm. that you need to reduce the current expenditure. But do they understand mm. how? how you can? Because if you increase salaries, 
If you pay all those things, you pay overheads. If you create more states, Definitely. which they're asking you for. Busy, yeah. If you create more commissions for every problem. Every, every problem. Every and problem. if you don't rationalize the existing ones, the current expenditure will we keep expanding. Yeah. What, what, what are your thoughts on that? Yeah, basically, my own problem is, is always been at what are we even spending with current expenditure for? Um. Yeah, close to 40% of that, 35% goes to budget, to the mm. personnel cost alone. Personnel. And what's the bulk of our personnel? They're just for the health, which are the doctors, the teachers. The, the police and the defense. Now, the four, first of all, four categories are things you would not do without in a country. So that they make a big, basic rules of government. And for those four categories, are they even well paid enough? That's the first question you would They're ask not. or not. So, my, my, my own basics is even the core of the recurrent expenditure are the it's basic misspent. functionalities of government. Okay, okay. Yeah? Well, another part is there's a high level of, of inefficiency overhead. in that space. The mm. overhead is high. Inefficiency in the public services are inefficient public services. Are. There's so many other ministries or, or, or where you uh, where you have so many agencies in which you can't really define what you're doing. So you have a border communities development, border you have communities, communities develop development. You have national boundary commission. Mm. So you have many things that are overlapping in. So, so you need mm. to ask questions. Why can't we just consolidate some of these things? So and you support that concept of rationalization. Concept go there. and also even like there should be an efficiency level attached to public service. So. Mm. It's not only about employing teachers. What are, what are the gains that we are getting well, from measuring that? Measuring yeah. performance. Measuring performance is very important even in the public sector. Yeah. So to please. hold that thought, yeah. let's take a time out and we'll continue this discussion. Right Thank you. Yeah. We'll be right back. My name is Onye Mike I live in Lagos where things are getting better every day. Our school has just been renovated and they give us free notebooks too. Going to school is easier and safer for students like me because I can cross the highway using the footbridge and I use the BRT bus which is fast, convenient and free for students like me. I enjoy looking at the beautiful streets on my way to school. And the many street signs tell me where exactly I am. When I get to baby job, the government will pay the fees for my GCE and MECO examination. I am happy. My mom and dad said all these good things are happening because they pay their taxes. I hope to pay my taxes when I grow up and start working. Have you paid your tax? Pay your tax. It's your civic responsibility. It's your duty. It's the law. You welcome back. Um, it's still the Policy Council, and I still have Olusheun David Onigbide of Budget as my guest. Uh, Sheun, let, let's very quickly uh, let our viewers understand one or two more yes. terminologies. Now, what's the difference between personnel costs and overhead costs? My, from my experience, people don't really yeah. understand. Now, you define those in this your definitions. Personnel costs are the part of the current expenditure of government used for the payment of salaries and pensions. So personnel is... Maybe those maybe salaries and pensions. Salaries yeah, and pensions. pensions. While overheads are the current expenditure used for daily or periodic administrative expenses. Expense. So, yeah, so you want to fill your generator, um, you basically have to buy a chalk in a class. Those are things called overhead, overhead. costs. Yeah. And, and let me relate that to the National Assembly. What I believe, mm -hmm. what I've come to understand that our senators and reps did with their emoluments was to say, okay, go government, the law says the national revenue mobilization fixes their salaries. Yes, so yes. they can't do anything about yeah. that. But they can award themselves some overhead course, yeah. costs yeah. which they put in the budget yeah. as overhead yeah, yeah, to run their offices. offices yeah. But which they then relays to themselves. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, it, it, it's one of the biggest places where the information is closed. That's the National Assembly. Mm. Um, National Assembly was like a ministerial overhead before. Mm. Um, but at the time, the constitution was changed and it became a status tree uh, transfer. Mm. That means even if Nigeria makes 10 naira today or 10, uh, yeah, they get that part of the people that get their funds first. I think it's needed for independence, but yes. now it, gets, it, gets, it gets because you don't want them to be waiting on the executive to do his boss money to them. Mm -hmm. But it gets to a point that you don't even have a breakdown of that finance. So all you There's just no get visibility. visibility. So all you just get this 150 billion naira, 37.5 billion naira per quarter, and nobody really knows what goes to personnel costs, 
what goes into the ovary. But like you say, it, it is a point of the revenue. I know yeah. that what they are getting, yeah, it's, it's those small. payments they are getting are, are actually tied budgeted to as overhead. overhead. Yeah, they're trying to run But they are really yeah, coming back to you, you, you subsidies to the, to, to the office. To yeah. the office. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Hmm. yeah. Interesting. Okay. Now, the, the final definition I would like to make is in relation to capital expenditure. Yeah. You have three definitions there. Take us through them. The least capital expenditure cash-backed capital expenditure, and utilized capital expenditure. Okay, so when the project of the process, the budget is ready, you go through your procurement process. You mm. say, okay, I, wanna, I, I want to build this road now. Then you call for BDs, you go through the tender process, and you are you're given a certificate of, yes, you have, you, have, you, have, you have fulfilled all the due process, and you can go on. At that point, then the Ministry of Finance says, okay, now I release capital funds for this, for you to run this. So that's released that's capital your released funds already. So now that means you've satisfied all the rules. And at that point in which you have done that is cash back. That means it release me assuming you have the money already. Money has to be with the central bank and says for this project, project. the money the money is ready, it's cash backed already. That mm -hmm. means you can go ahead and tell the contractor, now your money is ready, mm -hmm. come and have your money and get to that point. Mm -hmm. But there's a certain level of which you might not be able to disburse money. Maybe there's a there's an understanding with the with performance level to give money. So the contractor might say, when you do a 30% assessment of the project, you get this, when you get 60%. So the money might even be cash back, and you don't access everything. You can't access. Because maybe there are some conditions precedent, precedent to, disburse to disburse money. So yeah. utilize is what you finally access. I say, yeah, finally is what you finally now draw from the federation account. Now, yeah. now that drawing, yeah. I have a final level of, of worry. That, what you finally draw, what portion of it, <laughs> in your view, represents corruption? And what portion represents actual projects that can be seen? Yeah, it's it's it's. I think we it, 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 it's a lot of waste in government. Mm. Um, if you if you read this, so document, you have one play page yeah, where you talk about, about clipping clipping clip also of waste. Yes. Sometimes you don't find government projects yeah, even at the budget level being placed at the market level. That means if I will buy this jacket for twenty thousand naira, you will find that, that when you come to you put in appropriation in the budget. It can but be worth fifty thousand naira and basically. And it is that level it is that mindset you see people in, in personally in the ministry start even start bidding from like it's already in the budget at this price. So so you find that people will even come down to the list level. So I think there's there's been a lot of talk about planning the budget effectively. Hmm. Let people like quantity surveyors, let people like uh, uh, cost cost uh, cost analysts be involved in the project process, hmm. especially even at the ministerial level, hmm. so that we know that this is what this costs on the market price, and this is what we are bringing it into the budget for. Hmm. So we have a big size of the budget, and basically, and uh, it's not effectively or efficiently run. So we need to plan the budget, and that's why we have over 7,000 projects abandoned in the country. You know, hmm. many roads no, they're not being done. So it's hmm. because you 7,000 abandoned projects. Yeah. We'll be right back. Yeah, thank you. Hey, welcome, my son. We are giving free textbooks in our school today. Hey, I thank God. Oh. I know with this Lagos State government free education, my son will end up being a lawyer or a medical doctor. He can even become an educated automobile engineer. My son tell me, say, their yeah, school don't get beautiful building with a better chair and desk, new library, computer for everywhere, laboratory today, my people. All these things our children they enjoy today. Now our tax money do I more? I they pay my tax. Pay your tax. It's your civic responsibility. It's your duty. It's the law. You welcome back. It's my final segment with Budget Olusheun, David Onigbide. Fantastic work is doing, making the Nigerian budget accessible to the ordinary Nigerian. So let's, let's go through some specifics in this publication yeah. because I, I think some of these figures will be of interest to our viewers. So, so you have this page that shows Nigeria's 2013 to 2015 MTEF. Yeah. Now that's medium term expenditure framework. What, what's that? Yeah, yeah, the budget itself, it's not just based on an annual, the annual session where it is expected to perform. The budget has an history. Mm. That means if you have projects in the budget, they, they have been period of They get executed over a, a period, period of time, yeah. Usually a three-year three rolling plan, yeah. yeah. So and now also you have to also think through what are your plans in the next three years, mm. basically. So, because so you should plan also three years. Yes, uh, yeah. So there's a medium-term document which starts the budget process. That's when you're drafting that and you're giving that to the National Assembly. 
that this is how we are thinking in the next three years. Okay. Next year, it could change. Maybe in, uh, so uh, it's rolling. So we do 2013 to 2015 15, this year. Yeah. Next year, we do 2014 to 2016. Yeah, that's as a, the medium term expenditure, expenditure framework. Yeah. So the budget doesn't just come out of the air. Uh, yeah, no, no. It comes out of a uh, medium yeah, term. Yeah, thought process that there's a medium term. Yeah, 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 yeah. Excellent one. Uh, the breakdown of the 2013 13. budget. Ta talk us through this. This was done when the budget was still proposed by the president. Yes. But this is it's still a contextual idea about what the project yeah. finally comes to be. Mm. Now, the major chunk is the personnel cost, which is 1.72 trillion. Mm. So you notice that even the personnel cost of government is higher than the capital spending, mm. um, basically. So 1.72 trillion. trillion. Yeah, so it's a, it's a large workforce, basically. Mm. And, um, uh, and that's a large, large work inefficient. Inefficient, that's a very key one. So, so the personnel, personnel cost, cost is high than the capital spending. Hmm. Then you have the part of where you have the overhead cost for ministries. Um, hmm. uh, the minister has done a lot in reducing that overhead recently and bringing out the overhead cost recruiting. Then you have the debt service hmm. into also into that. Th all those things classify as a recurrent expenditure. Hmm. It's not what name government. So then you have pensions. That's also a size chunk of pensions. Then you have statutory transfer. There's some agencies by your function. The, the National Judicial the Commission, Commission, National, National Assembly, Assembly INEC, INEC, and, and, and uh, so Nigeria uh, Human Rights Commission. They sort of talk about bringing the Auditor General to that space now, so that also he also has a level so of So those, economy. the objective being to make sure those ones are independent. Independent. In get their funding, funding irrespective of government. Government of government. It's the executive decision. So, so you have um, some intervention projects, like, mm -hmm. okay, maybe the president wants to do a gender project, mm -hmm. an MDG project, mm -hmm. a lot of other things that could be like insurance, those won't fit into the service. Work. But all those ones, you classify them as recurrent expenditure because what I mean by recurrent expenditure is that they are consumed in a year. Mm -hmm. That means you pay salaries, it's ended. Mm -hmm. But if you build a school now with a capital project, next it's year, there forever. it's there forever. Or at least for 50 years. For 50 years. So that's what has been your experience? Are Nigerians understanding your yeah. message? Yeah, it, it's getting better. It's not like we've reached everybody mm. but in the small space we, we work which is the social media which mm. is for people online even for people who even have access to internet and mm. mobile phones it's mm. getting better you okay. have like close to a unique base of users of close to um, 90,000 people mm. I'm sure they have seen our site have visited it I interact with it daily because we track those metrics let me ask you very quickly about states and local governments we, we tend to focus on the federal yeah. a lot of 48 percent or so of our resources get spent in states and local. Yeah, 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 you're right. Are you trying to focus on that? Yeah, yeah we started a campaign on getting state budgets out. Hmm. The reason why we talk so much about the federal budget is that the data are how few states publish their budgets online. I think it's only Lagos and Nikiti Absin online hmm. published, being bold enough the ministry. In 2011, I tried to investigate Shekharao because it was a presidential candidate. Yeah, yeah. So I needed to know he's, he's how he had done yeah. in his state and it was impossible getting... Yeah, yeah. I found one budget document that some newspaper had uh, fortunately. So, we and so we've gotten close to 12 state budgets now. Um, we have a, a research fellow who is going around the states to request and to ask and, and build. And we also want to do like a metric. Let's compare the state budget. Mm. Let's see how they win in terms of transparency, detail, in terms of analysis, in terms of performance, mm -hmm. in terms of how even the state of their finances. I know a lot of, there's a lot of concern about the viability of states recently, even that are they really, really viable, even without the whole revenue mm -hmm. or the monthly fact, uh, uh, distribution. So let's even see the structure of your finances and we can begin to say, this, this is viable, this is unviable, and, and these things can begin to interrogate more with it. I, I, I think people need to know what government is doing. Uh, it's not an autocracy, so it's something that it's participatory. I should know, if I should not just see a school pop up in my area the next day. I should have an understanding that this school is the budget and this school is going to come someday. Mm -hmm. And if I'm waiting till September and the school is not there, I should be able to do a little letter or a little note to someone that you promised to do this for me in the budget because I have an understanding of this. And this is October, November. I haven't seen anything else. And the government should be able to make that discussion happen. So that's the kind of things we want to do. The budget might not perform 100% as should be because revenue inflows might also not reach that level. And I know some of most state governments are always very op 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 optimistic about their figures. So you see, maybe it looks like getting the size of your budget should determine the, the size of your economy. And I don't think it works that way. So, but you need to also bring that figures out to people to understand. This is the road for you. This is what is in for you for the budget. I hmm. need to ask more questions. Sure, so well done. I'm very proud of the work you're doing. Yeah, and thank and you. it's great the days you talk to a Nigerian who's like this. Yeah. It's been a great program. See you right back. It's been a fantastic discussion. The work that budget is doing is excellent in terms of making 
the budget understandable, accessible. Uh, experts like us talk in complex terms and talk to experts, to government. But we need the conversation to extend to the people. And that's the work that this group is doing. And, and we need that kind of work to be replicated in sectors in relation to health medical policy, legal policy, the constitution. All of these things are things that the average Nigerian should understand and should engage with. I commend the example of Sheung Onigmide and budget to other young Nigerians. It's the kind of intervention that makes you feel that perhaps in spite of all, Nigeria has a problem. Thank you very much for watching. See you next time.